Well, I guess we can get started. I don't know if I'm going to be the one that's facilitating the meeting, but I am the one that has like to share my screen and talk about my products. My name is Monica Mullen, and I am an account executive at Logan Finance. We are a non-QM lender, and we are partnered with you guys. So we're very excited to, you know, give you this presentation, let you know about our products, let, let you know about our procedures, and then hopefully answer any questions you have about, um, you know, our non-QM products. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me see if I can figure out how to do that. I usually use Teams, so I'm just, you know, bear with me, please. And I do see a few people are still joining, so I have no problem waiting. Okay. Can you see my screen by chance? Yes, we can see it. Okay, thank you. Okay, everyone, I'm going to get started. So, again, I'm Monica Mullen. I'm the account executive here at Logan Finance. And we offer non-QM products only. So we don't do any conventional, any government, anything like that. We just do non-QM. All right. How does that, is that big enough for everybody to see it? Or does it need to be bigger or smaller? Do you, okay. Tony says it looks good. Okay. I'm going to take your word for it, Tony. All right. So let me see. And this is just basically my contact information. And I will send you guys, you know, a copy of this when I'm done. So we do offer some things that are different. We have a scenario desk. So if you have questions, you can reach out to me. If I don't know an answer, I will definitely put a request into the scenario desk. And I usually keep you on the email because in case they have a question, it's easier for me to have you answer them instead of me going back to you and back and forth. We have a condo review desk for our warrantable condos and our non-warrantable condos. So we do have that and it's a pretty streamlined process. Um, we get those done quickly. And we do offer custom training for our portal. But to be honest with you, our portal is very easy to use. And I know a lot of people say that. It is easy to use and I'm also available to train on that as well. So I'm going to go to our next slide. So here's our suite of products that we offer. We do have a full dock and our maximum LTV on our owner occupied residence is 85% LTV. So you can get that on the full dock, bank statement, 1099 and asset qualification. Also our maximum loan amount is 3 million. So some of our products offer that. Our minimum FICO is 660 and cash out on primary residence is 80%. Oh, I can zoom in a little. Yes, for sure. Thank you. How's that? Does that work? Okay. Do you want more? Well, that would probably be too much. Okay. Tell me if this is good. So full doc, the reason someone would go full doc, obviously, you know, they can't get it done at a regular lender that does conventional. Um, their LTV is over 43. We go up to 50 on our LTV. We do offer second home options and investment property deals as well on our full doc. A popular program we have here is our bank statement program. And we've done that type of loan. Again, investment properties. We are doing a lot of investment properties right now anyway which I'm sure you've probably come across as well. So a lot of them can go bank statement if they're self-employed borrower and they don't show making enough on their tax returns or they haven't filed any tax returns, we can use their bank statements to qualify them for a loan. We can do 12 or 24 months. The reason somebody would do 24 months as opposed to 12 is if your LTV is 80 to 85, then you would um, want to do 24 months, you're going to get a better rate. Other than that, if it's under that, then you can definitely just do 12. So there's a couple of different ways when we do um, the expense factor for the bank statements, we're going to calculate that at 50%. If you need to show more than 50% as the income, there's a couple of ways to do it. A third party letter from a CPA, licensed CPA or a tax preparer showing that the income ratio is more than 50% will suffice. You can submit 12 months 
personal bank statements and three months business bank statements showing that in the business bank statements, um, expenses are being paid. And that would give you a hundred percent ratio. So you can use a hundred percent as the ex expense factor. So that's a lot, it's an easier option. The PL only is a newer. Oh, go ahead. If you have a question, please answer or ask, not answer. <laughs> Hi, Monica. Can you hear me? I can, Zach. Hi. Hi there. Uh, so you mentioned about the expense factor. So if we do get a CPL letter to verify the expense factor is less than 50%, you said they can go how high? Well, it just depends on what industry they're in. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if somebody's like a personal trainer, they don't have a lot of, you know, overhead they probably don't have equipment well they have some equipment but you know what i mean by that mm -hmm. like it's not hard um okay. and they don't have a lot of expenses so i've seen um cpas expense letters up to 90 percent. so they're going to use 90 percent as the um, income perfect okay mm -hmm. okay do you have any other questions on that no i that's majority of my business here with bank statements so that's why i wanted to ask you that question yeah, and you can always, you send them to me and I will go ahead and get them calculated for you. Now you can go ahead and uh, submit the loan before they're done being calculated, but they do need to be calculated before you can get initial review. Understood. Okay? All right. So our next product is P&L only. This is new to us, so I haven't done one yet. A little bit of different criteria. We only go up to ADLTV on primary. And the max loan amount is 2.5 million. I know that we offer a one year and a two year PL only. And it's probably similar to the bank statement. The reason you would do a two year is if you had a higher um, LTV. Cash out is allowed. So the CPA or the tax preparer just you know presents us with the PL. And then we will use 90% as the income on that. So this is a good program. Uh, we are getting a lot of people asking about it. I haven't, like I said, I haven't done one yet, but I'm excited to do one. Our 1099 program is just how it is. Maybe, you know, you're a 1099 employee. Oh, go ahead, Zach. Sorry about, sorry about that. I didn't want no, to interrupt okay. you. On your P&L, now, how many months of bank statements do you guys need along with the P&L? Because I know a lot of the non-QMs either required the last two months or last three months to kind of verify the deposits going in. That's a good question. I believe it's the last two months. That's what I've been told. So it's the last two months of the most current bank statement so that they can provide the proof that the money is going in. So it's two months. Okay. Okay. All right. So the 1099 is going to be year to date pay stubs or statements. So it's kind of not a true 10, 1099 program where you just need the 1099 and maybe two or three months um, of bank statements. We will need 12 months. And this is another one. I've done a couple of these. So it's a very good program. And we use 90% as income. So we only take the 10% as an expense factor. Asset qualification is, is another one that we offer. I haven't done this one either. So it's just a good option for maybe retired borrowers, um, people who have a lot of money in the bank or have a lot of, um, you know, stocks or retirement income, but they just aren't showing any income on paper. How, how is the asset, is it asset dissipation type of loan? Yes, it is. How do you guys calculate that? Well, I'll get into that further, but um, in the product offers, but we do take the 60 months divided by 60 to get the income, the yearly income. So I'll go into that one when I get deep into that product. Got it. So just give me a little bit here. This is just kind of an information. We are owned by Newberger and Berman. They own us and they are the ones who we send our, you know, they buy all of our loans, basically. We've been around since 1949. So this company was purchased. Um, it was a regular retail company and it was purchased by us like three or four years ago by Newberger and Berman. So here's where we fund the loans. We will be funding loans in every single state as an investment property loan. Now, if it's a owner occupied, there's some states that we're not gonna do. Obviously, Hawaii, New York, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. So we are not able to do any type of loans there. The only kind we can do is business purpose, which is investment property. So we give you an option, you know, have quite a few states to work in. And then here's our niches. I don't know if I should talk about these before I go into the products, but I, I will because 
they're very good. So we do allow 100% gift funds on all of our products and the borrower does not need to bring anything in. Now, here's where it's different. If it's an investment property loan, we allow that, or a foreign national, we allow it for a down payment and for closing costs, but not for like, you know, equity or anything like that or reserves. We do allow non-warrantable condos. We have a condo desk that reviews those, as I said earlier. We do allow loans to close, investment loans, I should say, to close in an LLC. And these do not get reported to the borrower's credit. They're basically going to be tied to the LLC, the mortgages. Let me see what else I have. So investment only, I already said that, LLCs and corporations for investments only, which is, it's very simple to do. We, you don't have to close a loan that's an investment property in an LLC, but we make it very simple. Okay, Zach, you have a question. Time? Yeah, what's Se the seasoning time you have on your loans? Seasoning. Oh, seasoning, six months. Six months, okay. Now, let me just go back to that, Sam. You brought up a good point. On our business purpose DSCR loan, right? We are not going to source out or season anything. And that's the same thing with our foreign national. We don't source out anything, large deposits. We don't season. So you don't have to worry about that with the business purpose DSCR loan. If it's a bank statement investment loan, they are going to ask for certain things. Okay, and I so guess I touched on that over here. No sourcing or seasoning for DSCR loans. Got it. Uh, so that makes 100% uh, gift funds allowed on the bank statement loan, or is it just the DSCR loan? No, 100% gift funds on all of our products. Got it. Okay. So it doesn't now, really have to. Yes. Let me finish just so to make sure it's clear because some people get confused. We allow it on all of our products. If it's a primary residence and they're going to mm -hmm. live in it, then they don't have to come in with anything. They can show the gift funds from the reserves all the way to the down payment and the closing costs. But if it's an investment property, they are going to need to show, the borrower has to show reserves on their own or Got equity it. or anything like that. So, but other than that, it's fine. And, and that's a huge uh, difference compared to uh, our other non-QM lenders because the majority of the other non-QM lenders, actually all of them, I believe, they do require for the client to have at least 5% of their own funds to for the yep. down and then reserves as well. Question on your uh, DSCR, it says no sourcing or seasoning. So that's, that's I think the only other lenders are offering that is MWest. But I have first-time home buyers for DSCR or in first-time investors. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll get to that. Okay. I like you, Zach. You got the questions. <laughs> um, so, yes. So let me, well, let me go down the, the little list here. So cash out proceeds on our products, all of our products across the board are used as reserves. Here's something different that we don't see everywhere. NSFs on bank statements, we don't pay attention to them. We don't, you know, keep track of them. We don't bother with looking at them. There's a lot of states, as I said, there's no license required. We have commercial brokers signed up with us where they don't even have a license as a mortgage loan originator. And they do loans that are just investment property in the states that don't require a license. And there's like 28 of them. You can do a cash out refi after six months on the new appraised value. And at minimum loan amounts right now, 125000 And on mixed use and multifamily, that product, it's 250000 So this is what I really like is our foreign national program is phenomenal. I love doing foreign national programs. You can do a second home. You can do it as an investment property. We're not going to look for anything. We don't need your credit references. We don't need them to have a FICO score. They don't need a housing history. And I'll touch on that more when I get to that product. So you can do dual comp on non-trid files, which is going to be any investment property no matter the product. You can do your borrower paid on the front and then you can do lender paid on the back as a yield spread. Like I said, no sourcing. Short-term rentals are fine. We will allow that, but we do need 12 months history and it can only go up to our four unit multifamily DSCR program. So it's not gonna be allowed on a mixed use or over four units. We do allow the borrower can have unlimited finance properties. We're not going to keep track of that. So here's the asset 
Situations Act, asset utilization, 100% of assets and divides them by 60. We don't give any haircuts on that. Got it. Okay. And I'm looking at your um, short-term rentals. So let's just say if someone's actually buying a property under DSCR, would you guys allow us to make a mark when we order the appraisal and have the appraisal consider a short-term rents being received because if there's other houses in the area that are doing the Airbnb, can we use that rental, some of the rentals from Airbnb? If they have the, well, here's what we would do. If they have the 12-month history, then we can, if need be, increase the market rents. Well, they if wouldn't it, have it a didn't 12, make it. Well, they wouldn't have a 12-month history because if someone's buying the investment a property as an investment property, mm -hmm. we're using the rents to qualify them, right? And let's just say the market rent. Yeah. The market rents. So if there are properties in the vicinity that are going on Airbnb or Verbo, mm -hmm. and normally Verbo and Airbnb are the rents are going to be higher than your typical rent, market rent. Right. So the answer would be no. Okay. Not unless they had the proof that they are actually doing that with their property. So here's to your question earlier. You can be a first time home buyer and you can be a first time investor. So, Got and it. you can do that together. So you could be a first time home buyer who's also just buying your first investment property, but you live in an apartment and you don't want to buy a home for yourself. All we would need for that is 12 months verification of rent payment and a lease. So you okay. can't be living on the couch or in the basement at your mom's and not paying anything. We do need to see that you know how to pay, you know, bills. We do allow non-occupant co-borrowers. So that's a good thing. And then that's our niches. So I can go, oh yeah, go ahead, Anthony. I had this question on the LLC doesn't report the credit multiple members do they have to have a certain ownership or is it just an operating agreement anybody who has over 20 percent needs to be on the loan to get it through or 25 percent, i should say to get it through and then usually what happens is they select the person with the strongest credit to be the as the buyer of the property and then after that it's just everything goes through the llc so it's not going to be tied to anybody's actual credit but you do need a personal guarantor on the on the loan. Right? Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. And then the personal guarantor's credit score will apply, but mm -hmm. it won't show under their credit report. Just to get the loan done, right? It, yeah. It's gonna like that's why I said you would use the probably the person with the best credit score. Got it. Okay, understood. For the foreign investor, the FICO score you will consider in. Um, it will be 700 or 690 for investors um on a purchase it's yeah, going to be DSCR. 680 dscr 680 is our minimum for investment property dscr for a foreign investor that's what you consider. oh for foreign investor yeah now. because in order to put it in your um to get the rate you need to know what's the what's your fico well actually you don't you can put in zero so for our we prefer foreign nationals to not have a credit score but if they do yeah. then yeah. the minimum let me just check because i want to make sure hold on i'm going to get that up for you you can still see my screen yeah so minimum would be for there's no score no score and then minimum would be 660 and then you would get a lower um ltv so it's better to have no score as you can see yeah. well here's the question how but 660 can I and then 680 if it's an investment property that's for second home what i showed you at first but in optima blue if you want to put it you need to have a score so how you i'll show yeah we have our own pricer and i'll show you how to use yeah. it i can do that a after we're done going over the products but right. yeah you have to put in zero as a score and then you have to put in citizen as foreign national now optimal blue i'm we don't control that so i don't know exactly okay what's needed there okay all right so let me move on to the next monica, slide monica can you hear me i can hi yes i can can you go back to the previous slide i just wanted to make sure that i understood that right when it comes to str rentals so if it is a resale property that the borrower is purchasing you are okay with airbnb and vrbo statements from the previous owner right or from that the is seller. correct is that yes and you know what I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. When we get to that slide that deep dives into that product, I'll explain how it works too. Because okay. here's, here's what happens sometimes. Let's say I'm going to buy a property 
and it's already rented and we want to keep the renter in there because it's my investment property. That's fine. Just like if, like you said, if they've got statements and they're going to be doing, they're still going to be using it for, you know, Airbnb or VRBO, then we will accept those. Okay, if it is a new construction, would you take air DNA data? We don't take that. Mm -mm. I'm if sorry. They, if the appraisal, you know, there is a there is a box in the appraisal, right? When they do the appraisal, they can say what average rent is in that area. So if the if that comes out to be the rental income for Airbnbs over there, would you take that into consideration? Well, or if the appraiser puts on there puts that figure in as the market rent on the 1007, then yeah, we would take it. But if he has something on there about, you know, what people are getting for the air D and DNA and other so that would not be. We would have to go off of the market rents no matter what. And then if they had a lease in place or the statements in place for the history of the Airbnb, we're still going to take the lower of the two, but we will increase the market rents by 115% in order to increase that so you can meet the ratio. So do you have a product that's on a DSCR with no ratio? We don't. We did okay. when I a year ago, but we don't now. Got it. Okay. Okay. So... I'm going to quickly talk about, I mean, if you're interested in hearing about the bank statement program and some of the things, I mean, we kind of went over things. Um, there's no LTV restrictions for condos. You can go up to 85. C. You just send us the bank statements. We'll calculate them for you. Um, there is interest only options available. And then, like I said, 12 or 24 months, business or personal, or if you intermingle but you're still going to need to send us 12 of whatever account. So we can't have like six of one and six of another. Got it. So what about if let's just say if someone owns a business and they were sole proprietorship and then, then they decided to go corporate, will you guys allow those two? Because if they were sole proprietorship, it's were, a business name. Well, they, it's, yeah, they still need to be having the business open and doing the business, but we can take a W-2 and a, if that was part of their income, is there, you know, self-employed job? No, no, what I mean, say, for example, if someone was sole proprietorship and we have the bank statements to show the deposits, right? Now mm -hmm. they've just recently, I don't know, in the last four or five months, six months, changed the sole proprietorship to an LLC or S Corp or any sort of corporation. And now the bank statement shows the business name, but it shows, let's just say ABC LLC or ABC, mm -hmm or supposed to compare to what it was in the past was sole prop. Would you guys be able to use both of them now because they just went, they just changed their business from sole prop to corporation? Yeah, because we have people who don't just change it, but they're part of an LLC or a corporation and they own like over 25. If you own over 25% of a business, you can do a bank statement loan. Got it. So yeah, you can. Does anybody else have any questions on this product? All right, let me move to, I mean, full doc is pretty much speaks for itself. You can do one year or two year income, minimum FICO 660. And that would be on, you know, for the primary residence and actually also for an investment property. So we do allow 660 FICO for bank statement and full doc investment property, which the DSCR doesn't. It, it makes you bring in or have a 680 FICO. Let's see. Okay, we already addressed that. Interest only available. Two-year seasoning from credit event with LTV cap. So we do offer that as well. And the LTV, I believe it needs to be at 70% if it's a two-year situation. Like a BK? Yeah, like a foreclosure, a BK, something like that. Two years we allow, the LTV is affected and it's down to 70%. Got it. So did I skip something here? No, I didn't. So this is the DSCR program that we've discussed several times. Um, a lot of people get confused when they think that because something's an investment property, it's automatically a DSCR loan. You may know that that's not the case, but that's not the case. You can get a DS or you can get an investment property up to four units on our other products. So not just DSCR. The reason somebody would select a DSCR is because maybe they don't have a job or maybe they don't make enough money and but they have money or they have no income, whatever. There's several reasons and maybe they just want it to be easy. Go off the 1007. They don't have to show any income documentation and a quicker close. So that would be why someone would select this product. We have a couple of different 
DSCR products. One is our low ratio. So if you don't meet a hundred percent ratio and you want to go low ratio, you can do that. We go from 0.80 to 0.99. That's fine. There's a little bit of an adjustment to the LTV and the FICO score to do that, but that is an option. We do also offer an elite program. I don't really have that on here. However, it's a program that the rates are better because you're calculating the market rents came back and we're at 120%. So we're not just meeting the ratio, but we're exceeding the ratio and we're at 120%. You're going to get best pricing for that. So on this product, you can do, go ahead, Tony. Hi. Hi, Monica. Uh, real quick. Okay, for uh, the DSCR product, let's say, is there like a distance, miles requirement? Let's say someone's renting and they want to buy a pro investment property from where they're... In, yeah. yeah, in their area. I haven't seen that been that brought up. I know at other companies I've worked at, I haven't seen that brought up. That's a good question. And what I can do is I can maybe like, I will reach back out to everybody with an answer for that because that is a good yeah. question. But I think you can be in the same area. Well, it wouldn't be a distance. If you're buying as an investment property, it should be anywhere. But if you're... Well, as I've seen it before, though, at other companies. Yeah. That if they don't consider it investment if you're buying it in your same area. They don't. They want you to be a certain mileage out. Yes, exactly. There, there's some uh, other non-QM lenders that say, oh, no, that's too close. It's 30 miles away or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's like I think I worked miles. at one of those. Yeah. Lone Stream is one where they're, they're, they say that. Yes. I don't need I to talk... Had about that <laughs> i never had an issue with that I, I mean at the end of the day if they're buying it as investment property why does it matter where the house is i mean people buy homes across the street and call it as an investment as long as they could prove that they can make the payments well you may have never paid attention because maybe it wasn't another state i don't know but i they're usually in another state but you can i mean i don't know it's it, i'm gonna get an answer for you okay tony because that that's a good question mileage from owner occupied. So hold on, I'm gonna write that down because I wanna make sure I get that answered for you. All right, and then, um, so here's what I wanted to go over with, with this, which is very important. Um, we do fixed, we do arms, we do interest only. We have a dedicated team for our DSCR investor loans. They pretty much do these nonstop. The underwriters are all the same. So let's just say that I like to set up the deal before it's submitted. So if you called me and said, hey, Monica, let's go over, you know, price this out for me and see what we get. So I can price it out for you. And then especially if it's a purchase. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll use, this is what I use. Hold on, I'll pull it up for you. DSCR calculator. So this is basically, you fill it, you know, with what you need to put in. So let's say it was $550,000 loan amount and the note rate was, 8.625 and they're doing a 30 year fixed. So we've got, this is our qualifying payment. So what I like to do myself and I can look anywhere, I guess, but sometimes I'll look on Zillow um, just to see what they estimate the market rents will be. Now, also they will show as in other websites do the same. They'll show the estimated taxes and then sometimes they show the estimated insurance. And of course, if there's an HOA, they show that too. So then you give the expectation to your borrower and also I can give it to the loan officer that, hey, this is where we have to be. We need to make sure the market rents come in right, you know, and let's say they do have a lease in place and the market rents come in lower, which happens quite often. We will then take the market rents and multiply them by 115 percent to come up with a new amount for them to meet for ratio so it, it helps offset some of that because you know let's say we have a seventy five hundred dollar a month lease but the market rents came in at fifty five hundred well and then we've got this as the piti and we haven't even calculated the taxes so they're not going to make it so we have to increase the market rent and we give you that 115 percent now some people choose to go low ratio, you know, and not really worry about it. If you didn't make the ratio, there's options. So you can buy down the rate, you can go interest only, which will lower the payment because we do qualify off of the interest only payment. So there's ways, you know, to make it work. But I always suggest submitting it as a DSCR one to one instead of 
submitting it low ratio because like I said, once you get that appraisal back with the 1007, everything is different. Everything then is changed. Here's a question. So you just mentioned something about if we do, if our clients are able to get a lease agreement, someone's willing to pay a little bit above market because that's what they want the property. They like the property where it's located. So mm -hmm. they're definitely not going to use the even if the clients have paid them the first and last deposit and the first month's rent, they're not going to use the new lease agreement. It's just going to go based on the market rent survey. No, they're using that new lease agreement to increase the market rent survey, but they're always going to take the lower of the two. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I understand, but you're only going to use a the market survey, let's just say market survey is 4,000, but it's the clients paying whatever it is, 55 or $6,000, but you're only going to do 4,000 times 115% to bump up that. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if because that we, we're not going to take the leases because there's people who will obviously 4,000, let's do this times mm -hmm. 115%. Now we're increasing this to 4,600. So you yeah. get a $600 increase. Now, they, the reason they don't just take people's words for it is because people can create leases all day long, you know? Got it. So they take the lesser of the two. And then I'll be honest with you, I've had, and this is a nice situation that we have here. Let's say you're buying a property, it's empty, it's a DSCR, it's not going to meet ratio, but you have people who are looking to rent it. They give a deposit, they show the proof, they sign a lease. We're going to use that to increase the market rents. Any questions? No? Okay, so that's just um, an option for DSCR and this is gonna be the single family residence up to four units DSCR program. Now we have our mixed use, which is between two and eight units. Um, it can be mixed use or it can be multifamily only. So this is considered a co commercial type of a loan, even, you know, even if it's just the multifamily. Um, we can go up to 2.5 million. This is very a very good program where we get a lot of people sending in loans. Um, this is where people are usually looking in areas where they have multifamily properties. Maybe they're in a different state because it says here originate with no state lice. Um, so it's very good program. Now on this one, it's not going to be 100% ratio. You're going to be at 110 or 120. So the property asked has to be actually either making money or it should be, you know, an asset to be making money for the person, the borrower, the investor. So you can do cash out, no limit of cash in hand, no sourcing or seasoning on this one of, you know, deposits or any of the anything of income. So this is another one where you're we're just going to go off of the appraisal. We're not going to we're not going off of any income. You can show us leases, which again will help offset the cost. We will increase the market rents. You can earn up to 5% on this transaction as well as the other DSCR program. We have interest only options. And if it didn't meet the ratio and it was a mixed use or it was over four units, then it's at that point you just can't do it here you got to take it somewhere else so we don't have a low ratio option and you said on these mixed use let's just say downstairs is, store, uh, is a commercial unit which is a store and mm -hmm. upstairs is the unit will that suffice will that work that's perfect now what we do need it to be is the majority of it needs to be residential but we can do 50 50 so let's say downstairs is a store 50 percent, and then upstairs another you know same same square footage that's a residential property so that's that's exactly what it is got it now it can be i've seen where it's been a, in the front of the it's one level in the front of the building the storefront and then in the back is apartments that's okay too any questions on this product okay this is our profit and loss Again, a brand new program we're offering. I haven't done it yet. Qualifying, it's kind of like the bank statement, but you don't really have to show the 12 or 24 months. You're just going to go off of that CPA letter with the P&L. Loan amounts up to 2.5 million. We're a little bit stricter when it comes to the LTV. FICOs are down to 660, and that would be on a purchase, probably most likely, I think it is, on um, purchase for primary residents. You can go up to four units. We're not going to ask for the bank statements or tax returns. We do need to show the two um, most recent bank statements for assets, 100% gift funds, and then cash out used as reserves. So there's that one. 
Our foreign national program, like I said, this is a great one. It really is a good program. You can qualify, you can do it as a second home or you can do the property as a investment property. So you can do full doc with either one. So you don't have to just do DSCR. If you do choose to do DSCR with this program, you will need to be at a one-to-one -one ratio. Your borrower can't go low ratio, so they have to meet that ratio. Okay, you just need to have the passport or the visa, not really a visa, but a passport and an ID to submit the loan. We don't need to see credit score. We do need to see that you attempted to pull the credit so that we have proof that, you know, you have looked into that. So if this program has to go full doc for whatever reason, and it's an investment property or a second home, we're not going to ask for the same thing we would ask from a U.S. citizen, like taxes and W-2s and all of that, because in other countries, they may not have anything like that. So we just need a, a letter. All we need is a letter verification of employment if they work for someone. It says how much they make, it says how long they've been there, all of that. Or if they're self-employed, we're gonna need the same thing, pretty much like, like a bank statement. We're just gonna need the CPA or letter or a tax, you know, a licensed tax preparer. Now, again, in, the, in their country, they may not have someone that is called those same things, but they usually have someone who is licensed that can provide that. And it does need to be, you know, translated into English. The funds need to be translated into it, or not translated, but transferred into an American account. And you can go up to four units. So we're not looking for trade lines. They don't have to show us and prove that they own a home in their home country. It's a very simple program, and it's, um, it's a really good one to have and to offer. Do you have any questions on this program? All right, so let me just go to our next slide. The asset qualification. Again, I haven't done one of these, but I think it just sounds like a really great program. Assets are divided by 60 months, no haircut on stocks, bonds, or retirement account for reserves. Minimum FICO 660. You can be a first time home buyer. We, if you have cash in hand, unlimited cash in hand, that's fine. And gift funds are allowed for down payment and for closing costs no borrower minimum. Actually, on this one, I do apologize. You can use gift funds for um, everything. You don't just, if it's not an investment property. So on this asset, dip, this, uh, I've known this for a different product name, but so mm -hmm. basically, for example, you take the, um, whatever they have in stocks, the full value. Let's just say, for example, they have a million dollars. You mm -hmm. divide that by 60 months and that should give you roughly around a number where's my calculator is that the full so let's just do a million dollars divided by 60. Mm -hmm. that's the, the income you guys are going to use divided by 60. Mm -hmm. so right. that's going to be their monthly income okay. okay so basically you guys are looking for is uh the atr to be uh five years meaning as long as they're able to they have enough funds to pay yeah correct that is okay. correct mm -hmm. And on this program, as well as some of our other programs, so they could actually have a W-2 job or have a, you know, another source of income. That's okay as well. We allow that and we um, use that as their income to qualify them. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And non-warrantable condos, these are a great option for some. Um, we don't do condo tells, even though those are very popular and I would love to do those. <laughs> We're just not doing that. Um, but we do have the condo desk that will review everything and then it will go over what is needed. The investor occupancy, we can go up to 60%, single entity up to 25%. We do allow commercial space for commercial offices. So it could be a mixed use, non-warrantable condo. Owner occupied purchase 85%, um, new project pre-sale 25% owner occupied. So there's a lot of different options with this program. And we do have, like I said, the scenario desk as well as the condo review desk that is very good at reviewing these and getting these um, qualified. So if a condo is a non warrant you guys can go up to 85% LTV on it? We can. There's no LTV restrictions, yeah, on condos. Now, L85 on a primary residence. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, owner that's correct. Owner yeah, owner-occupied, it says. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. There is a rate adjustment for non-warrantable condos, but again, there's no, you know, restrictions. 
Okay, and then we just have like our support team. Um, condo reviews is here. Scenario desk, business purpose, exceptions, all of that. This is our trainer. We do ask you if you have your credentials and you have a loan to submit to use a link to schedule a training. It's about a 15 minute training where he can go ahead and upload your loan for you. That I would suggest you only do that when you have a loan because you're never going to remember. There is a job aid and I'm also available as well. It's a very simple program to use, our portal. And so even though people say that all the time, it is easy, but I'm also available to help. So if you're not able to get with this person, Matt, and schedule something and you have a loan to submit, which most people do, they're you know rushed for time, 100% available anytime you need to. Our quick pricer is we don't need credentials for that. You can use that. It's on my signature. Um, this is the portal to submit your loan. So let me quickly show you. You can do this on your phone as well. And again, this is by my signature. And then it's also in this um, attachment I'm going to send over. So you want to start over and clear it. But let's talk about the earlier we mentioned the foreign national. So let's, I just want to show that gentleman how to, you know, price it out. So you can go full doc or you can do debt service. So let's say it's a purchase. Let's say it's 700,000. We're going to go 65 LTV. Reserves for foreign nationals are 12 months required for purchases, 24 months for cash out. But we do use the cash out as reserves. So let's self-employed. You don't have to put, you can put yes or no because it's not going to matter if it's a DSCR. So if you want to do the foreign national, you're going to put zero. Let's just say no and no. And then lender information, if you know your comp and you want to add that in so you can check the rate, you can always do that. I'm going to just put one in just to show you. So the ratio, we're going to need to add the one here because that's this product has to have a 100% ratio. We can say no to interest only unless you choose to. And then your citizenship is going to be foreign national. On a DSCR loan, you can go up to five-year prepayment to get the best rate. Most people select that or they select three years. Um, you can choose the escrow waiver. And then you're going to go here. Let's just say it's a single family. It's an investment property. And then the state is California. So I'll show you what will happen. Okay. So now this will come up. Now, if it's your first time using this, you're going to want to go filter it and make sure your 30 day is selected. It will default to 15. And I don't know why, but it does. So here's your rates. If you had a 1% lender paid comp, this would be the rate. Um, I always like to then drop down because I want to see my quote just to make sure everything looks good to go, okay, well, maybe I should change something and get a different rate. You know what I mean? So you have this at a quick glance. If you want to print it out, which I usually do when people call me for uh, rates, I'll click on one of these two products and then it'll show me the stack here. So for instance, when we were talking about earlier, let's make, I wanna make five points on this deal. Okay, I'm gonna charge three borrower paid. That's the max I can charge, borrow paid comp. And then if I wanted to, when I'm going to lock it, I wanna charge two on the yield spread, then I'd be right here at 8.625. But in the meantime, this is what we have at par. So a lot of people are doing that. They're just charging, if, especially if the borrower is not rate conscious and they don't care, they're taking the two, but they can do it in different variations. They can charge one and a half on the front, one and a half on the back. So you can do it different ways. So I'm just going to print this out and it's going to have everything on it and just keep that for. How does that get disclosed on, let's say, closing disclosure? The borrower paid comp? Well, if you stack them together, how would that be disclosed but that be discloses the borrower paid comp let's just say i charge someone one percent for borrower mm -hmm. paid comp and let's say i'm i'm going to make another one percent in the back so will that show paid no because that's included into the rate this is included into the rate the two here so it's not going to show that and when you do a um, investment property loan whether it's dscr or anything we're going to go off of a hud one so it looks completely different than a cd got it okay yeah and it doesn't really differentiate the fees like that when it comes to like comp. So it's, it's kind of nice. 
would a buyer be allowed to buy down the prepayment penalty? Because you only showed five years. I only showed five years because I wanted to give you best pricing. So now what I'm going to do is let's go back to our results and let's edit. Now, this is important to know. When it comes to up to four units, you can change the prepayment penalty to go no prepayment penalty. You can go one year, two year, three year, or five. If this product was a DSCR and happened to be a mixed use or over uh, four units, then we have to keep it at five. You will not get pricing. So, but again, foreign nationals, you can't, they can't get that product anyways. So let's just say we decided to go no prepayment penalty because there's some states that don't allow it. Like New Mexico doesn't allow a prepayment penalty and the rates are usually really high. So they can still do that, but here's the rate now. It's 9.375. If we look here, you're obviously not going to be charging um, anything on the back end because you just can't. So that would be the rate if they didn't want to have a prepayment penalty. Got to either pay now or pay later. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you guys have any questions on anything that I covered? No, I just I would like to. Well, first of all, thank you for this presentation. That was pretty helpful. And then, you're very welcome. Will you be a sending the log? Do we have to request logins from you directly to price things out? Well, okay, to price things out, you don't need a login. So let me show you my signature here. So when I send an email, a new email, hold on. So you see that. So we are on Loan Sifter, we are on Loan X, and we are on Lender Price if you work with any of those. And then our pricing portal is there's no credentials needed and that's the one i was just showing you so you don't have to log in there now if you have credentials you would be getting those to submit a loan you can go in and price out deals in our portal however i don't ever tell people to do it it's because it's like it's a hassle just because it's so much easier to just go ahead and, and do it from here you know from the pricing portal let me show you our portal really quick while we're here you can see my screen right Yes. Okay. Let me show you this just to show you. I mean, there's going to be other loans in here and stuff. So when I, you're going to land on your pipeline, you might land on something different because this is my version, but this is our portal. And I'll just quickly show you if you're going to start a new loan, like I can't show you everything on my end because I don't have the same thing you do, but you would, this is your summary of the loan just some of the information important dates loan amount details i actually i never look at this but it is good to have so this is your portal would be looking like this when you do your you put in your 3.4 you're going to come to the application portion if it allows me to okay okay well fun so this would be the where you're going to land after you put your loan in the portal you're going to get go through the general tab first you're going to update the doc type because it will always be full doc you're going to select the purpose it's always going to say i think it says what it is actually from the 3.4 so you don't have to closing date make sure the loan officer is correct and then you just kind of go down the row of things that you need to update if it's a dscr loan you're not going to have income in here so this would not be there you would definitely not be able to have that and then the property additional income expenses then you would go over here to lock and price you know after you get done with all of this you this is where you would price out your deal and once you register the file then you're going to put in your documentation then we're going to get notified and then at that point here's where you would put in your documents you'd go to submission when you first start your loan you're going to put in your documents there once the loan has been conditioned, given uh, initial approval and you have your conditions, this one hasn't yet, you're going to go ahead and take a look and each bucket you're going to upload your condition and then you're going to submit for review. All right. So it's a pretty simple system. It really is. Okay. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. I know that we've had a long meeting. If anybody has any questions, you can ask right now or if you feel more comfortable emailing me, I have no problem. Hey, Monica, Answer. what appraisal companies would you be able to use or do you take transfer appraisals? Yes, we take transferred appraisals and we have a list. However, as long as you're ordering it from an AMC, that's fine. We will accept it. Now, 
One thing that's nice to know on your DSCR loans, you don't need to wait for, you know, an intent to proceed to sign. You could order your appraisal before you even submit the loan if you wanted to. And you can lock your loan with us once you've proven on an investment property loan that you've ordered the appraisal. It could be a snippet from an email, whatever you want to do. You just can then request the lock. All right. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you guys so much for attending. I'm gonna go ahead and send out this actual, you know, whatever we just did, the webinar, I can't talk, <laughs> the webinar, and then I can send out um, today's rate sheet, and then we do offer white label flyers. We also have Spanish white label flyers. If anybody wants anything like that, please let me know and I'll get it over to you. If you want credentials, I believe there's an admin through Loan Factory. So one of the admins, maybe it's Natalie or someone, they can go into the portal and get you set up with credentials. Okay? All right. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you later. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Monica. Thank you.